Hey, take your time. I think you did the rightest thing you could sending the pallet back to Edgewater. A lot of people would have suffered otherwise. People I care for. Even if they ain't care much for me. This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So, when can I expect them back at their posts? That's good enough for me. Adelaide and I have a history. It was unlikely she'd ever come back. But hope springs eternal. We are in your debt. I am authorizing you for a discount on all official Spacer's Choice products, courtesy of the people of Edgewater. By all means. Thomas. Thomas Kemp? I remember him. Had to write him up for daydreaming a few too many times. He tries real hard, Mr. Thompson. This is something he wants to do. That'll make him twice as good. I will give him a chance to impress me. If he knows his way around a toolbox, I may have a place for him in the Holcomb workshop. This whole fiasco is not one I am keen on repeating. I was too hard on my own workers. I pushed them to their breaking point. With more hands at the cannery, I expect productivity will rise. I expect we'll grow. And I expect I can ask corporate to send us some more medicine. We'll survive, one way or another. Well, science. But it still happens. Hey, that... I mean, if you need it, go ahead. Something you need?
Sometimes I wonder what I'm doing with myself. Wonder if the plague's ever gonna pass. I'm not allowed in here. Not since the vending. Miss Holcomb ain't allowed in this establishment. Not since that little incident. Ask her if you care. I'm running a business here. I won't touch anything while we're in here, Mr. Moreau. I promise. Music to my ears. It's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice. And before you ask, I'm all out of deluxe salt tuna. All I've got is gourmet. Go right ahead. What, you mean Edgewater? That's a peculiar question. This a test? Am I being tested right now? It's, uh, fine and dandy. Couldn't be happier. Wouldn't want to spend my life working anywhere else. Prettiest little town on Terra Till. You are condescending to me, and I do not care for it. I am lucky to have my work, lucky to be alive. I don't get paid for banter. Was there something you needed? Go right ahead. Other than yourself? Definitely the vicar. Don't get me wrong. He seems a decent man, cut from church cloth, knows his scriptures. But there's something about him that bothers me. Like he's not one of us. Sometimes I suspect he doesn't even want to be here. Amelia. Definitely Amelia Kemp. I advise against stepping foot in her drinking establishment altogether. 
Word is, they're gonna replace her with an auto-mechanical barkeep. She's... what's the word? Obsolete. You don't want to associate yourself with that kind of person. Heard something outside the walls today. Nothing. I appreciate the company and all, but you really ought to leave. You don't want to be seen around me. Because I'm sick, you don't want to associate with people in the sick house. We're not worth your time. I'm in about as much trouble as I can be. No reason you ought to be tarnished by association. People are gonna talk. I don't know which company you work for, but if it's Spacer's choice, Boss can still write you up for fraternizing with an incompetent worker. Maybe you don't know this, but there's a real simple reason you don't talk to the plagued. You don't want what we've got. Don't. Please. I could get into a lot of trouble. That's kind of you to say, I suppose. But I don't need help. What I need is to understand my own folly. Company always tells us weak spirits lead to weak bodies. If I didn't want to fall sick with plague, maybe I should have worked harder. Maybe I should have taken more pride in my work. I really wish you wouldn't say those sorts of things. I told you once already. People could be listening. I'm feeling a touch faint. If you don't mind, I'd like to be alone for a spell. At least I paid my gravesite fees. <laughs> I don't want any trouble. Hey, Miss Parvat. Lovely to see you about, Miss Parvati. Things going all right, Silas? Been keeping him careful and true, Miss. Best to ask her yourself. My dad's buried here. Silas watches over him when I get... when I can't leave the house. Oh. Well, thanks. Something I can do for you? run into any trouble? Conrad's got a barbershop in town. Phyllis works at the cannery most hours. Abernathy... I ain't seen him in a few days. His domicile is near the cannery. You'll find him in town. All except Ludwig, that is. He's over by the landing pad. Please don't touch anything. 
Your hands are probably crawling with germs. Physical hygiene recapitulates moral hygiene. Cleanliness is next to lawfulness. No, thank you. That's quite all right. I've seen enough body parts in my line of work. I'm Conrad. You will report to me if your hair fails to meet Spacer's Choice aesthetic standards. You will also report to me in the event of your death, whereupon I will clean and prepare your remains for interment. Ah, gravesite fees. Silas and I had talked about this at length. I thought I'd made it clear my pecuniary situation precludes the necessary restitutions. As broke as pie crust, friend. Bitless, indigent, destitute. I simply cannot afford it. I am a blemish on the prosperity of our fair settlement. When I expire, I expect Silas to toss my body into a ditch. Thank you, no. I despise the cereals. Tell Silas I can't afford to pay, and that I fully expect to have my medical rights revoked for this dereliction. With my apologies. Some time ago, I fell ill with the plague. By the grace of the law, and through my own hard work, I'd proven worthy of treatment. Frankly, I don't imagine I'll earn that right a second time. The barber work hasn't been profitable, you see. I've had to keep this old place running with my own savings. Not a bad idea. But I'd need some kind of collateral. My pair of lucky clippers! No, that won't do. Your idea intrigues me, but I'm afraid I don't have anything to give Silas. I'm open to suggestions. Much obliged. Be needing nothing but salt tuna for a year. Has it ever actually been in here? Seems scary from the outside. Welcome to the Spacer's Choice Constabulary. We are Halcyon's leading brand in frontier justice. The office is writing up promotion. Purchase three criminal investigations and the fourth one's free. As a Spacer's Choice Constable, I am authorized to grant you legal authority toward apprehending wanted criminals. Know how to carry yourself in a fight? I've got bounties out for these three marauders. Cross them off and bring me their fingers. Just one per marauder, please. I'll dust off the old fingerprint roller. Anthrocillin, huh? That's an anti-Cleo product. I appreciate your vigilance on behalf of Spacer's Choice. I'll make sure this medicine goes to where it's most needed. Sealed, packaged, and delivered to a Spacer's Choice storage facility. Standard procedure for contraband, you see.
you are of course entitled to a reward for assisting in the apprehension of any contraband. Your compensation and your receipt. Spacer's Choice wishes you a productive shift. Medical treatment by Anticleo's products is strictly prohibited under Spacer's Choice company policy. I distribute this medicine to our workers and we're all complicit in a crime. If you are one of our workers, I would be obliged to mark that comment on your permanent record. It's a good day if you make it back. If it to ain't town the Starship piece. Inspector, here's hoping Edgewater's up to your standards. Wish we had some better rations. Not that I can You the new worker? Whatever. Make it quick, Tenderfoot. I'm busy. Shit. Silas still on about that? Here, take the fees. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Reed I was late on my payment. Because they're not my fees and not my gravesite. Guy I worked with shot himself. I paid the bill. I could do without the sarcasm. Wasn't acting out of the goodness of my heart. Law requires delinquent gravesite fees to be paid by the deceased party's closest living relative, which meant me. Shame, though. Eugene was a good worker. Woke up one morning and put a round through his upper story. Can't imagine why. The kid was doing all right at his desk. We all thought he was an upstanding receptionist. Just between the two of us, I'm pretty shocked his weapon didn't misfire. Spacer's choice handguns aren't the most reliable. Not half as awful as the bill Eugene left us with. Suicide's a crime. The legal term is irreparable damage to company property. What Eugene did to himself was vandalism. I'm plenty serious. In fact, I'm a little upset Eugene didn't think things through. In other words, Edgewater would have been penalized pretty hard. Whatever Eugene was worth as an asset, we would have had to pay out of pocket to Spacer's choice. Well, excuse you. I'll have you know Eugene was an asset to us all. May his atoms be commended to the law. All I know is Silas asked me for Eugene's gravesite fees, which means he was approved for burial, which means his papers went through, which means the town's in the clear. I'm just glad to put this whole ugly affair behind me. Eugene can rest his bones in peace, and the rest of us can get on with our own lives.
Don't make me report you to Mr. Thompson. Nothing. Just don't want to fall sick. Another day at the cannery. Don't go knocking your work. At least we've got... Grave digging's a fine profession. Always work to be had, and nary a word of complaint out of your clients. You run into any trouble? Conrad's barbershop is a yawning pit that swallows his every bit. I keep telling him he should cut a few corners, skimp out on the disinfectant. You gotta put the squeeze on Conrad. Find some dirt on him. Maybe check his back room. Well, that's the word, extortion. Been on the tip of my tongue all day. What can I do for you? Oh? Am I in the company of a fellow doctor? I am a Spacer's Choice Certified Surgeon. And if you must know, I can stitch a severed thumb with a 58% chance of avoiding gangrene. You know about Eugene? How? Then, you know Phyllis suggested selling off Eugene's gold teeth. I didn't approve of the idea then, and I don't approve of it now. Eugene's golden teeth were a family heirloom representing three generations of poor dental hygiene. He took them to his grave. That's unthinkable. Eugene's body and all rare earth minerals contained therein are solely the property of Spacer's choice. I can't ask Silas to dig up a man's body and pry a few teeth loose from his jaw just to pay my bills. Can I? Uh, are you asking rhetorically? Because if you're being serious... Ugh, gross. Desperate measures, Miss Holcomb. Desperate measures. I'm going to have to ask Silas to dig up those teeth. It's the only way I'm paying my gravesite fees. Here you are. Gravesite papers affixed with my signature and an IOU. Eugene was not a suicide. He put a bullet in his brain, yes, but that's largely a technicality. I was the one who prepared Eugene's body for interment. I discovered symptoms of the plague on his corpse, and I discovered medicine in his pocket. Lots of medicine. Eugene overdosed on Adrena time, which is known to cause psychosis and paranoia as possible side effects. The paranoia drove him to take his own life. It's a miracle of bureaucracy. 
If Eugene's death were filed as a suicide, we'd all pay the price for his crime. We can all thank our lucky stars that young Eugene was hopped up on medication and suffered its predictable side effect. I included it all in my official report. I'd like to think I saved Edgewater a great deal of money. We never could have paid the fines associated with a suicide. Been eating nothing but salt tuna for a year. I've got some time. Oh, I'm an actuary. That means I keep tabs on a worker's living expenses. How much it costs to feed, clothe, shelter, bury, and replace your average human worker. Technically, I'm employed by the Spacer's Choice Department of Human Resources. If you're falling sick, I don't want you near me. Wonder if the plague's ever gonna pass. Just keep working. Work 45 minutes. I don't have time for this. safer inside the wall. Don't make, Don't make me report you to Mr. Thompson. I'm 
bakery, I could open up a can. Great work. Is this your ship? Oh, my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship, working on a real engine, belonging to a proper crew. I'm the only decent mechanic Edgewater's got, but every time I think of going back, I get this sinking feeling. Well, it's kind of you to say that. And you're right. I wasn't happy. 
I want to ask you something, and you can say no. But... Can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? Yes! I mean, uh, thanks. You won't regret this, ma'am. Captain? I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. Two, five, seven. Two, five, seven. One.